So you've had your 3D printer for a few weeks now and things are getting pretty serious. You've spent some late nights with it, tweaking calibrations and getting some awesome prints off it, but you want to try something different. You want to try something bigger. You want to print big parts on your 3D printer, but your print bed is only so large. It's okay, I won't judge. But don't despair because in this 3D Printing 101 I'll show you three awesome techniques I use all the time to slice larger objects into smaller, more manageable chunks for your 3D printer. Technique number one. NetFab Basic. So NetFab Basic is a free program where you can fix your STL files, scale and slice them into smaller parts for your 3D printer. Now I don't use NetFab Basic for fixing very much because it is quite well basic but it is fantastic for slicing files. So to use NetFab Basic dump your STL file into the program and make sure you scale it to the size you want. Then move the object onto the origin so when you slice it you can enter precise dimensions. And from here it's actually pretty easy to simply enter the distance you want from the origin and to slice it at that point, either in the X, Y or Z plane. Now it's important to know that these planes will slice in infinity in their respective directions. So NetFab Basic is not very good for slicing extremely complicated files because you may slice areas you don't want to. However, for simple things it works really well and when you're happy with the files that have been sliced, simply export them out of NetFab Basic and stick them into your favorite slicing program. Technique number two, Mesh Mixer. So Mesh Mixer is my favorite 3D printing program of all time. If you have a 3D printer, you need to learn Mesh Mixer. So to slice your files, bring them into the program and similarly make sure you scale them to the right size. From there, we can then use the plain cut command to slice our file into sections. The plain cut tool in Mesh Mixer is very freeform and you can move it to pretty much any location you like. And when you're happy, make sure you change it to slice so you keep both sides. When you're happy, click separate shells to break your new STL file into its separate chunks and export them out for 3D printing. And one awesome thing you can do in Mesh Mixer is you can isolate areas for cutting. So if you have a very complicated file, for example in this death claw I sliced not too long ago, you can isolate areas by selecting triangles and slicing only those triangles using the plain cut command. This works extremely well for complicated STL files where you don't want to cut certain other areas within that plane if you are cutting normally and it makes it far more powerful than using NetFab Basic. If you're interested in checking out that video, click the link here where I go into more depth of using this slicing technique. And finally we have technique number three, which is actually a bit of a hack, but it works really well. Simply dump your STL file directly into your slicing program and lower it into the bed. So when you actually slice your file for 3D printing, it will start at the bed and obviously ignores everything below it. This actually works really well and I use it all the time for files that have organic or uneven bases. I'll simply sink them into the bed a few millimeters to make sure they print with a nice flat base. And I can thank my buddy Joel over at 3D Printing Nerd for showing me this awesome technique. Be sure to check out his channel. So there you have it guys, three awesome techniques you can use to simply slice your files into smaller pieces for your 3D printer so you can print massive things in pieces no matter what size your print volume. If you enjoyed this video on Makers Muse don't forget to subscribe. I do videos like this all the time and these techniques I use on a daily basis. So if you're interested I'd love to have you jump on board. I'll see you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. See you later.